So I went in for clothing technology. So in clothing technology, fashion design is just a unit, just one single unit. It has about five units, textile science. It had so many units. But now for me, I took, I think I was best in mainly fashion design, garment making, and uh, I was not so good in textile science because chemistry, chemistry has not always been my thing. So because I was so good in the fashion and garment making part, I decided to try do something. So my lecturers started making, taking notes on what I used to wear to school and they were like, wow, you have a nice top. Who made that? I did. I need something like that. So my first clients were my lecturers from school. So that's how I started, small, small. I started making for my teachers. Tell a friend to tell a friend. People used to see my work. So mainly, I started dealing with referrals. I make something for a friend. Uh, the friend to that friend sees and comes and makes something. So I used to make clothes for like a hundred, nearly 800 shillings those days. So instead of people going to the fundies in town who did it at between 1,500 to 1,800 at that time, so I used to get a lot of clients from within the institution. So that's how I decided to start. I just used to make things from my mother's living room and sambaza them to clients. Oof. Yes. How has the journey been? Mm, I won't say it's been that tough for me because I worked from home for some time, for a very long time. Then when I finished college, I decided to work for some people, you know, the internships and that kind of stuff. So when I finished college immediately, I had a referral from one of my lecturers in college to some fashion designer in Malindi, <coughs> V Fashion House. They needed someone to help with the fashion shows, to work as an assistant designer. So imagine just finishing college and you land your first job before even your results come out after exam. So yeah. So I went to work for V Fashion House before even my results came out. So I worked for V Fashion House for one year. I saved up money. So after one year, I decided, no, a lot work for people. It's hectic. You do this, do that, move around, go somewhere, do this. So I de decided to save up my money because they were offering me like everything, accommodation, meals. So my money was like untaxed. So I saved good money. After one year, that was back in 2015. So after one year, I decided to come back to Nairobi. I was so used, you know, when you get so used to this city, my friend, you cannot live. Yes. Especially the coast. <coughs> Life there is a bit slow, so I could not cope. I decided to come back to Nairobi. Bought my own machines, rented a shops. That's how I started. So it hasn't been that complicated for me. Ah, nice. Good yeah. to know that. Yeah. As, as, as you progress with career, you deal with different kind of clients. Yes. What's your clientele base like? Mostly, I deal with women, mostly. Mm -hmm. I do all round, even for men. But many of my clients are women. You know, women love lovely stuff. A man can buy an outfit today and buy another outfit after two years. <laughs> but a woman will buy an outfit today after a week. She'll feel that outfit, that outfit is old. She needs a new thing. So you love one woman who will buy like six outfits from you in a month. But you can get a man who will promote you after one year, two years. Faith bado unakuwanga kwa biashara. I need something made. <laughs> <laughs> so most of my yeah. clients are women and kids. Because women, you know, women love yeah. to make nice stuff for their children. Yeah. Yes. True, true, true. Mm. So as, as, as you deal with people, how would you, would you, how would you, um, how would you say your growth, now that you've said it wasn't complicated, mm. how would you attribute your growth trajectory um, in terms of you, your clientele, you've, you've worked with fashion um, models and all that? Mm -hmm. I can say mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not very easy working with people sometimes. Mm -hmm. But patience, patience takes us through. So to so many clients, we've been, it's been like Niseme family. Our business is like a, a family. Many clients of mine are known to me personally. We are like Niseme Tunajuan on a personal basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one to one. We talk 
on a daily basis. So models we hire from outside once or twice. So as the business grows, you know, you start with people, unalipa kidogo kidogo. As the business grows, shara inaenda ikipanda panda. Yes. Amazing. Mm. Amazing. Mm. I will I will <coughs> I will want to shift gas mm. to women. Mm. That is because today we talk about women mm. a lot. Mm. We have women. I, I I I there's a conversation we were having some time back and someone was like, Ata we are ship yaki season in yeah me vap. Yeah, you hear a lot of things yeah, out no here. Women. You know, someone was, was talking to that. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, who will tell women you are pear shaped, mm -hmm. wear this, mm -hmm. you are this shaped? Do you mind taking us through that? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Like for me specifically, I'll ad I advise my clients, you know, mm -hmm. there are clients who come with something specific in mind. I want this and this because she saw it somewhere on mm -hmm. somebody else. So women, different women, should wear different kind of outfits. Mm. So for me, my clients, if you come with a design, specific design in mind, and I see that that design will not fit you well, I'll tell you, because they are designs for different body shape. Like um, an hourglass figure will not just wear anything. They are type of outfits that will not go with them. So women should know their different body shape. There is a pear shaped woman with a very small upper body, very large hips, you should know what to wear. You should not wear clothes that are very wide mm. downwards because they make you look even bigger. Mm. Yes, yeah, so you just wear nice fitting outfits, pencil outfits, hourglass figure too. You know the hourglass figure, they have um, a large bust, small waist, wide hips. So it's like the bust and Chupa the hips. Fanta. Yes, in a balance. Ah. A very <laughs> tiny waist here. Uh -huh. eh? Huyo pia, mm -hmm. hawezi vanguo, iko wide sana chini. Mm -hmm. You know, fitting. At the, you should just wear something that goes with your body, body shape. Yes? Mm -hmm. Now we have the peg, pegged shape woman. Larger upper body, small um, lower body. Lower body. Mm -hmm. Now that one should wear the skater, what we call skater mostly. Ah. Fitting at the top. Wide mm -hmm. down to mm -hmm. flaunt your hips, make you look like you have wi hips. Mm -hmm. And then you should look at the stripes too. There we have striped fabrics. Mm -hmm. Play a lot with stripes fabrics. For ah. people with uh, larger bodies like us, we should not wear the stripes that go Easy. horizontally. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I hope Z land. Z no make yes, they make the eyes run in this direction. So it, it widens you. So if you have if you have if you're well endowed, that yes. is if you're big, yes. don't wear stripes mm -hmm. in a heavy. Mm. Use vertical wear stripes, stripes that diagonal. Or this yes, chesesha macho. Chini heavy. Ah, so if you wear this, I've never known. If you wear this, the eyes play like this. Like this. Yes. We are learning. Keep telling us. Yes, and also the well endowed people wear a lot of black. Play a lot with black. They make you look smaller, a bit smaller. Ah. Yes. People who are smaller? People who are smaller try to wear outfits that are a bit large. Mm -hmm. Play with the horizontal stripes. Those ones are good down. Yes. Kamu kona hips ndogo. Ngwezako chini make the stripes a bit horizontal. Mm -hmm. They make you look bigger downwards. I'm interested. Yes. Like na feel na line. Yes, and use colors that pop out if you're a bit smaller. They look you they make you pop out more. Someone like me? You okay, I can say you're middle sized, you're average. Mm -hmm. You're not big, you are not small. small. So you'll do okay in so many designs. Yes. Okay. Mm. Colours. How do we choose colours for different functions? Because mm. we will come. I will come as a woman. Yes. Nenda sidri event. Trosium tu nenda. What I'd wear for a wedding is not what I'd wear for a burial. It's not what I'd wear for a cocktail party with my girlfriends. No, I have come to you. I want to go for this cocktail. And nime kuja juni liona wengine ome vayongwa. I have come and I am insisting. If fundi hi, kindi ona tapa. So probably tell us what do we wear for the office? What can we wear for... Weddings, mm. what colors pop for 
funerals, like what can we do? Mm. So functions ziko categorized. Mm -hmm. We have happy occasions, mm -hmm. weddings, birthday parties, uh, mostly parties and weddings. Wear colors that are happy, colors that pop out, bright colors, red, yellow, play around with bright colors for happy occasions. Mm -hmm. Office, in the office, we don't need much of color because uh, in a uh, divert attention, you want to from the working environment. So that's where we u that's why we use cool colors for the office like gray, brown, navy blue, a bit of cool colors. For funerals, we don't want people to be diverting attention from the matter at hand and keep on looking at you. Don't need to be the center of attraction mm -hmm. in somebody else's funeral. That's why we always black or white for funerals. Mm. Cool colors. Everybody will be in black, everybody will be in white, so nobody will be looking at you like, wow, who's that? When you pop out in a red outfit, yeah, yeah he doesn't yeah. go. So how do you keep up with the current trends in fashion? Fashion, with fashion, uh -huh. it's always a, a learning process. You have to keep up. So you keep on reading. Social media always you work a candle because you have to know how the world is moving. Because fashion moves with the times. Yeah, so it's a learning process. We call it a learning process every day. We keep on learning. You'll find me, I wake up to, to Kusoma too. You keep up with YouTube and all that. You like wake up at, like, you have to keep reading. Yes, we have to keep reading. You know, fashion, you can't say that what I learned in school is what I'm still doing today. Mm -hmm. In school, you are only taught the basics, a basic skirt pattern. So with the so many changing designs, you have to learn every day. Because design me valiwa leo si yenye itavaliwa next month. Mm. So you have to keep learning what is new in the market. You know, like designs rich Kenya, they come from the up, up countries, kina US and all that. Zikikuja huku chini. So we have to keep up with fashion ya huko ju. Mm. As they come, mostly fashion ya here Italy. L have a lot of love for Italian fashion if you want to keep up because that that's where fashion lives. So you have to keep updating yourself on what's going on. There's a new design in the market. How can I come up with such a patterns to come out with such and such an outfit? So mm. fashion is a learning process. You never stop learning when you are a designer. So how do you how do you think your role or rather your career as a fashion designer, now that you started a while back, has changed over the years? Uh, even if you look at our social media handles, mm -hmm. what I used to make in 2016 is not what I make today. Like uh, last week, my mom was laughing. I made my mom a dress. She was going for some funeral in Tanzania. And she was la laughing. She was telling me, where? Squeeze you, maongezeka. And I was like, where? Squeeze you, maongezeka. So you can see improvement in our work if you just look at our social media mm -hmm. handles, what, what we used to make back in the days and what we are making right now. We keep growing. We keep learning new stuff. We, we deal, you deal with clients every day. Yes. So tell, tell me about a moment you've had to deal with a very difficult client. Wow, we deal with those like <laughs> every week. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but of course, <laughs> maybe you remember one or two here and there. <laughs> mm. Yeah, there are people who are just complicated. Mm -hmm. They come, I want such and such a thing. You make it. After you make that outfit, and a now I don't think hapa itaka na mimi vizuri. Can we change it to something else? You know, you've made a whole outfit. You've spent like two, three days coming up with an outfit. Now you have to change something. Yeye hailewi, in order for you to change that thing, you have to undo the whole mm. outfit. Okay, I tell them, okay, Sawa, we can do that, but at an extra cost. You have to pay for that, because that is like, I'm starting afresh. We do that. And then there are these clients who come, they fit. You know, woki mongalia, She's like, Apa, utafinya kidogo. But we come in here, kunona hapo ni kipunguza. Iyo nguo, itaharibika. But we try to explain hi, Lewi. And I insist, so you're like, okay, sawa. Tutapunguza. Unajua iyo nguo, unachukua naikapale kwa hanga. I don't even touch it. And when she comes back, she fits and she's like, wow, hey, it's now perfect. 
and I didn't do anything about it. So the people were just <laughs> complicated, yeah. <laughs> just that the mind, yeah, Julie. Yeah, it's a mindset. Yeah. Yeah, the people were just complicated. So for this business to succeed, you have to be very patient, deal with each and every person according to their personality. How do you handle criticism? Because of course it comes a lot. Yes. Mm -hmm. I know you take criticism positively. Yes, those are the things that make you grow. Yeah. So tell us ab how how far you've come with where Africa. Of course, it, you're not where you started. Yes. You've had people, you've employed, mm. you've hired, you've done a lot. Wow. Tell us what's the growth trajectory yeah, of where Africa. With hiring people, that's a challenge. Especially when you're starting, when you're still young. Unanyanganywa, eh? ufanyikazi sana with the big, big companies, eh? You know, obvious, everyone looks for greener pastures. And uh, in this field, uh, we really lack skills. Eh? There are people who have studied fashion, but uh, I think they just do it for the sake. Uh, like for me, I'm very keen eh, with the details. You have to do my dress details the way I want them to be. That gives me a lot of problem with employees. So most of the times you'll find me working alone. But uh, we've grown. I started alone, definitely. Mm -hmm. So far, I've employed three tailors. Mm. Yes, and I have trainees too. Ah. Yes, I have two people who are under training from time to time. So it's been a journey. What's that one thing that would surprise people about your career? Surprise. I would say... For many, the comments I get from people every day mm -hmm. are, uh, well, fei, kweli wewe ni fundi. You know, see, we are called fundis, eh? And we're used to that thing. So, hata ma watu wengi wananembianga faith, ni kuse vaje faith fundi. Fei, kweli wewe ni fundi. Many, the main thing that surprises people about me is you don't find many women tailors making men outfits, male outfits. I make even mm -hmm. male suits. So, that surprises many people. Like the other day I had a... You make male suits? Yes. Okay, I'm also surprised. Yeah, I make... Ev yeah, you see? So that is the main thing that surprised people about my business. Like I had a client last week. Uh, they are supposed to go for a chade. Yeah, wakamba. Mm -hmm. So the wife was uh, telling him, Twente upimwe. She was like, Nanani. No, the, the, the lady making my outfit is the one who's going to make your, your outfit. And he was like, okay, Twente tutu one, but... I doubt. So when the outfits were out, he came to feel and he was like, okay, ni mekubali. So I personally, and I'm the one who makes the male outfits. I'm the only one who makes the male outfits in my workshop. Oh, yes. That's nice. Yeah. It's, it's okay. It's also something like I was also, I'm also in for a surprise. Mm. Because I, when I was asking, I don't know what I expected when, mm. when I asked you <laughs> what surprises people about your mm. career. So how do you know what fabrics match together? Fabrics go with the textures. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand fabric textures to know what will go with what. They are light fabrics, they are heavy fabrics, they are rough, rough ones, they are the soft ones. So you have to really learn textures. You know what textures goes with what design so in order for you to know how to blend fabrics. And you have to know colors very well. You have to be color-cautious to know how to mix fabrics. Yeah, because there's a time we tell Fundi this green. Yes. You show Fundi this green. Mm. The green... Hey! <laughs> I told you she could have trusted. The green they give you. Yeah. Or oh, you tell them this shade of pink. Pink has a lot of shades. Let's let's even talk about pink. Yes. Pink has so many shades. Fuchsia, mm. dewy peach, dewy what? Mm. So you've shown Fundi this. Yes. And it's also good for um, uh, the Fundis, among the designers, to have a color chart. You know, like for if you have green, have a color chart for green, have a color chart for blue. So that when a client tell you, I want this and this type of blue, Mumbia choose from that color chart, mm. the kind of blue you want. Because someone will come and tell you, I need uh, royal blue. Yeye kwa mind yake hajui royal blue. Anafikiria royal blue, anamini navy blue. 
So it's also good for designers and tailors to have a color chart in their workshops with them. Amazing. So that the client chooses exactly Ile what they want. No yes, nataka hi. Kaizi za nils. Yes. Unabiyango mtuni hi. Yes, so una label mali umandika measurements zake, you label navy blue chart color number one. Ah. Yes. Okay. Mm. Okay. Mm. Now I'm learning. Now I yeah. know. It's like good to have a color chart for you not to have disappointments with clients. I think I think a lot of those disappointments have personally made me stop shonaying work. So me will yeah. rather go pick what I like. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So many people. Ni get to shop. Ni me pata clients when you when you make disappointed before, but I always I always tell them how about we fika. And no, it's true. Kuja, please. <laughs> Kuja. <laughs> so, once you've completed the design, mm. how do you know it's finished? We From have a fundi's perspective now? Like, we do quality control. Uh -huh. You know, we have so many people kuna mtu anakata. Like, for me specifically, I cut out the patterns myself to make sure everything comes out the way it's supposed to be. So, unapea fundi wakushikanisha. Kuna mtu wakumalizia finishings, these are overlocks, na pasi. And then I also do quality control myself. Ah, what's I have to control? check, you have to check, uh -huh. is the quality what the client wanted? Is the fabric okay? How long can this fabric last? Inafaa kupigwa pasi, ama hifai kupigwa pasi. Overlock imefanywa vizuri, ndiyo nguo isi, isi fray. You have to check, check such and such things. Pasi imepigwa. So, you also know that this fabric, I fight people pass it direct. You advise clients on such things when they are picking their outfits. Thank you for saying that. Yes. Because I have an outfit that I fight people pass it. Exactly. So say in a shine cup. We have a lot of that. I fight pass moto. So what we always do, chukua kitamba, a cotton fabric, deep inside water. Kamua, wekelea ju, piga pasi. You won't have problems with your clothes. Ah. Yes. We are learning. Today yes. I'm also learning yes. quite a lot. <laughs> because there are times you have, I have, I have a dress mm. that I was like, ah. Uh, mm. Yes. permanent. Especially for the artificially processed fabrics like nylon, polyester. They burn like plastic. So if you place a very hot iron, it will burn like plastic. Oh. So just take a cotton fabric, dip inside water, mm. rinse all the water out, place on top of your cloth, iron. As a fashion designer, what would you wish people knew about fashion? Fashion, fashion pays. You know, we hear comments from people every day that, iyo ni kosuwezi fanya. Tailoring, hizo ni majina wanatengeneza tu ati fashion mara nini. But people should know that parents especially, parents who are ages awas as you wait to, they don't believe that this is a course that can help a child in any way. But I can tell people that fashion is a beautiful thing. Fashion is all round. Eh? Even if we go hungry, tutakosa chakula and all that, tutatembea uchi. We cannot walk naked. So clothes goes all the way. Parents watch our total of funny easy courses. Let the kids do what they love. Fashion pays. That one I can say. It has paid my bills for years. And uh, it has fed many people because I have employees who feeds from this job. Mm. So fashion is a beautiful thing. What's because yeah, our houses, fashion is everywhere. Our houses, can we go without curtains? You do throw pillows in your seats. Mm. That is fashion. You do a carpet in your house that matches your couch. So fashion is all around. It's a very wide course. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So what are some of the challenges you've faced throughout the years? Challenges mostly in Kenya. Rising costs of living with reduced revenue. So like this year, you know, we are like it's toward we are heading towards Christmas. But uh, business is not that much blooming. Raw materials are very expensive. So we end up increasing the prices of clothes. But uh, like in Kenya today, not so many families can afford to get a tailor-made outfit. So many people go from Tumbas. 
So the main challenge in this kind of business has been the high cost of living and reduced revenue. Yes, and uh, lack of skilled people, lack of skilled tailors. Tunanyanganyana, especially yama biashara, competitors, tunanyanganyana wafanyikazi, all that. Those are, are has been the main challenges in the business. Yeah. During time like now, Christmas mm. Mm. or Easter, when they when they are festive seasons, yes. you usually are very busy. I've seen very busy. I've seen your husband has um, has come with you. Yeah. So how do you how do you how do you balance family, work, children? Mm. We try to balance. But sometimes it becomes complicated because like a uh, time like now, we, we sometimes stay in the workshop until midnight. So sometimes it becomes hard, but uh, most of the times we try as much to time ourselves. Eh? Like uh, normal days, we are usually in the workshop from 8 to 5. So at 5, go back home, drop the career woman clothes, pick up the mummy and wife stuff, yes. So it's mainly timing, but at times like this, when it's a high season, it becomes difficult to balance. So yeah, no one can be perfect. Sometimes we have to chase the papers, so How does it is what it is. Like? My normal day, just me waking up, doing the normal things people do in the morning, have a shower, put on go, go to the workshop. Sometimes I spend a whole day in the market, in the shop, shopping for fabrics because we have new things every day, new fabrics come in every day. So most of the time, wake up to, to my drive to my workshop, to the market. Mostly we shop at Isili and uh, Karyobangi market. Nairobi textile, so not so much, only a few things that you don't find in Isili because uh, the raw materials are a bit expensive. So my normal day, just wake up, go to my workshop, go to the market when I need to go to the market, back to the workshop. Back at me, I life. Because my shayangu ni workshop nyumbani, workshop nyumbani. Yes. What's the most satisfying thing about being a fashion designer? I can make my own clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I can dress myself and my family. You know, kununuanguo ni expensive. I know that. Yes. Mm. So the most satisfying thing is I can dress myself, dress my family. I can furnish my own house. I can design my house the way I want it to be. What, what's that one thing as we come to almost a close to an, of an, an end of this conversation? Mm. What's that one thing you will tell women about fashion? Women, we need to love ourselves. The way you said when we started, that sometimes we judge, yes. There are a lot of women who doesn't love themselves. They don't have a jipendi at all. No, so as a woman, you need to be fashion cautious, please. Dress up, look nice. You know, <laughs> dress like a millionaire. Mm -hmm. Dress like a million dollars, even if you have only two shillings in your pocket. So. Wanawake tujipende. Tujipende to dress like a million. Hey, hiyo pati ya mgu ficho maskini. I'm taking that home. Yeah, it's true. And uh, like for my business, we deal with all kind of clients. Kuna wale wa garama ya chini, middle, garama ya juu. They are materials that are of good qualities, but uh, very, nisiseme cheap, because cheap is relative, very friendly mm -hmm. price. So you don't have to like dress in a million dollars for you to look nice. You can look nice even in the cheapest outfit in the market. So dress like a million dollars, even if you only own 2,000 shillings. Thank you. Mm. Please use that camera to give us a parting shot. And tell us where we can find you mm. as on social media yes. and where you're shopping. We are located in uh, Siokimau, Beijing Road. Great Wall Apartments, phase two. You can find us on Facebook, where Africa Designs. You can also find us on Instagram, where Africa. Where Africa, W-E-A-R, 
F R I K A. So many people use C. It's K A. We are Africa. You can also find us on 0727-637-225. Please come and promote us. You love working with us. Amazing. Yes. I rarely do this in this segment, but mm. today, having seen your family, yes. I want you to give them a shout out. <laughs> 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 she came with her family. I mean, <laughs> hey, this must be love. I'm to be a little bit of a little bit of a So, I'm here with my husband, Tyson, who's always been my number one cheerleader. Yes. Amazing. Yes. And I have my two babies, Zuri and Aww. Taraji, also in my designs. You see, they're wearing very nice bomber jackets. Yeah. Yes, when comes a bit. So I love my family. Any day, any time, family comes first. That's so beautiful. Like I saw yes. them and I was like, <laughs> oh, I mean, they woke up in the morning to bring you. Yes, when I woke up, they were like, Mommy, where are you going? Can we go with you? Oh, yes. That is so, <laughs> that is so nice. Yeah. That's, we appreciate your husband for bringing you. It's not many men who will do that. Yeah, you know, true. when we met up, we are busy. We are busy, but yeah. it's, it's time we appreciate you for coming. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Faith, for coming. We mm -hmm. really appreciate you. I love asking this question. On the road, are you a cheater or a totally? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe both it depends with when. <laughs> yeah. Sorry? I can say both. In a depend ni wapi sangapi. So sometimes <laughs> this life so no now balance. Now that we are dealing with fashion. Mm. Uh, now that we are dealing with fashion, yeah. uh, are you a heel person or a flat shoe flat shoe person? I'm a heel person, definitely. Flats once in a while. When I'm running day to day stuff, like going to the market, you know, if I cannot go to the market in heels, I cannot be on the sewing machine in heels. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> but I love fine, I love dressing up nicely. Mm -hmm. So I'm definitely a heel person. Amazing. Yes. So can we have Taji, Musmani Taraji. Taraji, and Zuri? Come. Come, babies. Come, babies. Come. <laughs> Come to a fresh shout out. Meleta Mami Asubuyote. Oh, such pretty <laughs> girls. Sasa, how are you? Hi. How are you, Mama? Hi. Say hi to the camera. Ile, say my hi. hi. <laughs> <laughs> they, they came this morning, they brought their mother to the studio. And we love appreciating women. We love appreciating what women do. And we love appreciating women who support families. That Thank was you. it from us, Strength of a Woman. It has been amazing to have Faith Etienne. She is doing where, where Africa that is dressing. She's doing fashion dressing, women. Name it, call it anything. Are uh, you cold? It has been such an educative and impactful um, session we've had. And I hope you've grabbed something for yourself. Just in case you missed the interview or it will be uploaded on our YouTube channel on Y254 channel. We are taking a very short break, but we are coming back with more.